Picasso original. It's actually made by Picasso friend in Murano, live with him, and he had the rights to to do his pictures in glass. Believe it or not, each part, each 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 part here cost two hundred thousand. So you got you see six hundred thousand dollars. Anyway, that's how I uh, connect the simplest arrangement. I'll take the. L bracket, put it into the connection to the dovetail, and I will put the telescope. By the way, here I have also the lens, I just left it there. I have an eyepiece. So I'll connect that. It's best to connect it. To the, to the screw which is farther from the lens, the eyepiece, because of the weight distribution. So if I put this now up, I see the lens, I mean the eyepiece, and the connection is that show you the simplest way to make the GTI work. And later on I'll show you how I connect to the Wi-Fi. You can also do it through a USB, but I'll connect this guy at all. So this is the simplest way. In this world I open another clutch. You see the azimuth. Close this clutch of the azimut. I open the clutch of the altitude. Now, if you have altitude and azimut open, you can actually point the telescope to any location in the, in the sky. I can go here, I can go down and up. And that's basically the advantage of alt us It's a much simpler arrangement, but not as accurate as the equatorial. The only problem with the equatorial is that if you don't align it with the polar node, you'll have also error. And I don't know which error is bigger. If you are a really good uh, astrophotographer, you know how to do it. Like, uh, like some of that you can see on uh, YouTube. Trevor Jones, for example, will do it exactly accurate and can track for hours the, the stars. I'll try to get to that someday. Uh, I'm 81 now, so we'll see how many years it will take. Today is uh, March 14. 2020, still we have the coronavirus around here. 
hope they'll solve the problem. Today it's a very sunny day and maybe I'll be able to go out and uh, shoot some of the stars or in the, maybe some of the planets. We'll see what's happened, but first I'll set up the, my uh, GTI to be ready. So right now it's set with the, with the William Ropsey optics with the L-frame, but I want to make it more stable. Stability is extremely important in astrophotography because... So I'll take the telescope out. Put it secure on the table here. I'll take the L-frame out and I'll replace the L-frame with a flat uh, bar so it will be more stable and I connect it to the, to the base. I will also connect two rings the tube which allow me to have more peripherals connected to the telescope so I'll tie them up so now I have a flat plate I have the mount I have the William optic tube I have an eyepiece here with the eyepiece angle and the only thing now, I have to install the software to control the mount. That's what I'll do next. And this is for the alt as For the tutorial, we'll have a whole chapter. So I'm going to do experiments in the daylight to try to see if the telescope, the GTI, will find a particular star, even though it's, a, it's in daylight. So I will, I will first align it here and as a fake alignment and see if it can find approximately where is the star and I'll check it on my app to see if it, the star is in a, approximately this location. So I will get to the application And the application is first uh, the C-Scan Pro to, to start the mount. So I'll turn on this mount. As you see, the light is flashing here. I will have to set the OTA, the William Optics, to horizontal. Now check the horizontal with the leveler. Mm, a little bit just perfect by coincidence. Make sure all the clutches are closed, the azimuth and the altitude. Point it to the node. And to find the node, I will use the, the compass here. So I'll go to the compass, compass, so here I have the compass and we'll see where is the node. So you tell me that the node, you have to be very careful not to be close to the mount because you have the magnetic effect on the compass. So it shows the node is in this location, here which this is my house, there's the node. This is the south. So that's acceptable. Get out of that. 
go to the Wi-Fi. So I have to generate a Wi-Fi from the mount to my cell phone. So since I turn it on, it's already flashing. That means the Wi-Fi is on there, but it's not here yet. I'll get to the Wi-Fi connection. Wi-Fi. Right now, it's connected to the Arial 5G family, which is right in the other room. But I'll select the syscan. So it's selecting the syscan now. Got it. And now I can start the application, which is the Syscan Pro. I'll say connect. And it finds the alt as and the equatorial. Today we only discuss the alt as So it's warning me about the sun. Let's see if it's connected. Yeah. It's a little bit moved. So now I want to align. And I align it with the node level alignment. There are many options here, bright star, star alignment. But all these things you should do in the dark. With the node level alignment, I found out you can do it right in the room. And it gives me a choice of Sirius and Regal. So I take Sirius, second star. Oh, second star, actually it's Mercury. Begin alignment, it tell me to make sure that the telescope is pointing to the node, which it is. I say next. It start the alignment. So it's assumed that Sirius is there, I cannot check it, but I'll believe it. And then it will go to Mercury. Assume that Mercury is there. I'll accept it. Still make some adjustment here. It tells me manually center it, so I assume I mess it. And it says alignment successful. So the mount think that it's successful. Now I'll go to some star and see if it's there. So I'll go back and we'll go to star. Let's say, I'll name a star. So in this case, let's go to Sirius, which is minus 1.6, which means it's very bright. Not now, of course. What well, it is bright, but we cannot see it. We'll go to Sirius, and I say go to. Well, it thinks it's there, and I cannot tell because it's a daylight, of course. But I can go to an application that tell me where the stars are now. So I'll go out here and go to an application that call Skyview. And I'll search for Sirius so to be stars. Stars, and I'll go to Sirius, to S, uh, let's find it, okay, to be here Sirius, I found Sirius. So let's say where is Sirius? It 
found serious and look on it. It's not bad. It's not 100% correct, but in the proper direction. And it could be adjusted at night, of course. Now let's go to another star. So let's go to Polaris, which is the North Star. So I'll go out and I'll go to the application again. And go to well I have to manually adjust to it, but I didn't, it's okay. But then I'll go to another star. and search for Polaris. And I know the Polaris is there someplace in the note. Let's see if it's going there. That's not bad at all. Let's check if it's in the direction. So I have to manually center it, which I don't, I'm not doing it now. So we'll open the application and we'll see if it can point to the North Pole which is the Polaris uh, star and it will be only approximate but on the application you see that uh, it find it pretty good so now I'm up out at night it's uh, 8.30 and I am uh, going to set a real session of taking the Venus. So I will uh, again align the align the scope. So I'll start it. Select the proper Wi-Fi Select the C-Scan Okay, go to the application which is a uh, This can pour. The application is open. I'm going to connect. It found the Alt AS and the Equatorial. I select the Alt AS. It's in. I'm going to alignment. I reset the proper alignment. So it will start from scratch. And I'll select the again the note level alignment. Oh, I can actually take a bright star. So the first one is Venus. The second one is Actuus, which I don't know where it is, but I'll go to Actuus and I say begin alignment. So I have to actually go to Venus and manual center it. So I will go out, I will not do that. I'll go to different alignment. I'll take note level alignment. And I select Venus again and see you a second. And I say begin alignment. 
it's horizontal. Next. So now it's going to the Venus. And it tells me now manually to center it. So I'll go to the eyepiece and see if I see Venus, Venus, Venus. And I do see it, wow. So I need to a little bit align it. So now I'll try to find Polaris. It's very, very foggy there. Let's see if it can find it. Name star and we'll go to Polaris. So Polaris. see Polaris, but it's very, very dim. Right in the middle, very small. I don't think I'll be able to catch it with a phone. But the next session, we'll be using a stronger eyepiece and we'll see how it works. This eyepiece is 40 millimeters. And the focal length is 350. So 350 over 40 give me the power of the, of the amplification. But I'll go and get a much more powerful eyepiece. So I got now 10 millimeter eyepiece. So this will be amplification of 36, 360 divided by 360 divided by 10. So we'll see the size of Polaris now. In fact, I'll go and go to Venus again. Yeah. 